I mean, I just won a pro tour, so I feel I feel great. <laughs> Get ready for March foil madness when you order from CoolStuffInc.com. During the month of March, each Magic the Gathering order will receive a free foil, with some lucky customers receiving a foil rare or one of these special promos. Get your orders in now at CoolStuffInc.com. Cool stuff in stock. All right, what is up, my friends? Welcome to another video here on CoolStuffInc.com. You watched last week. You saw the pre-Pro Tour version of Vampires, the really, really early version that was like the early prototype. Kind of a cool look into the deck building process on a pro team. If you missed that, go watch last week. So it was a really, really cool like first draft of a deck. But now you're seeing here the final product, of course. My teammate Seth Manfield won the whole freaking Pro Tour with this deck. Uh, my teammate Sam Party also made top eight. There were 11 of us playing Rakdos Vampires in the tournament, uh, myself included. And uh, Paul Reitzel played the, the Mono Black Vampire, like a much more updated version, but sucked the Mono Black guns. Uh, but we all made day two. We had the highest win rate in the tournament of any deck with more than two players. And uh, more info in the article in CoolStuffInc.com where I'll go over the whole deck in particular and so on and so forth. But for the most part, this deck is a mixture of kind of like a... You know, a typal uh, vampire deck with Sword and Imperious Bloodlord. Uh, you know, Preacher of a Schism and Blood Death Harvester are really good vampires. It also works really good cards. And we got some Dust Legion Zealots here. Uh, but most importantly, we've got the brand new Vein Ripper. Uh, a six drop that is just, you know, pretty hard to beat once it's in play. Six five, War Attack Creature, Double Blood Artist, and just a really powerful card. Looks like a Commander card, but uh, you put it in play on turn three in Pioneer and things get a little wild, honestly. So. Also very castable, too. You know, and the big innovation with this deck was adding red, uh, where it was monoblock to start, but adding Harvester, adding Fable, adds so much generic power to the deck. Harvester being just a phenomenally good card. It's also easy to cast, can loot, kill things, etc., etc. And, of course, Fable is one of the best cards in the format. Uh, Fable does everything. Loots to fix your hand and find Sorens. And also, you can just cast Ripper. You just Fable on turn three, you make a token. Turn four, you attack, make a treasure. And then turn five, cast Ripper. Simple as that. So, um... Really, really worked out well, and of course, um, that, it's funny because Seth's deck is a little different than most of ours. Uh, Seth played only two Zealots and two main deck Duresses, the main deck Shouldered. Most of us didn't do that, uh, but Seth's just, you know, Seth's Seth, he's insanely good, and uh, obviously worked out for him. So, that's the deck, and uh, obviously we talk at the event, and I'm really excited with all the work we did for this deck, and uh, let's play it. Let's see, uh, see how we do. Command Fest Dallas is coming April 19th to the 21st. So saddle up and get ready to hit the trail for a weekend full of Magic the Gathering. Get your tickets now. All right, so opponent's got Gigantha. I mean, a few things, obviously, but our hand's pretty great here. Uh, we're on the draw. We have Fatal Push, which is excellent. And we got Copter and some stuff. One sword away from a Ripper, which is nice also. And a Zealot to try and find it. Yep. Foundry and Hoplite. So we get to replay the finals of the tournament of the Pro Tour, which is awesome. And... We're just going to kill this now, I think. Yeah, it's already obvious that we have the Fatal Bush at this point. And what's not, what's from God's Willing or whatever. So let's kill this now. Might be wrong if they go land hasted 2-drop. It's kind of bad for us, but we'll figure it out. Another Hoplite. And then nothing. Wow. So we... Don't draw land. But Copter's pretty sweet. And that'll give us two looks at a Thoughtseize next turn. Also, we can go Zealot, Crew, Attack, Loot, and maybe Thoughtseize. Alright, so they have all spells in their hand, which is not ideal. Here comes the Hoplite. Just coming in. Do they have a uh, Double Strike dude? Yeah, they do. Okay. Here's the Alright, we got a Zealot and just Copter and hope we draw thought hope we draw a land for Thoughts easier. This is a spot where like we have two looks at a land. I think if we miss a land drop this turn, it's really, really bad for us. So it's a little risky if we miss, obviously, but first draw is a land, but not one that comes in untapped. It's awkward. And let's attack. And second draw is a land that's not tapped for black mana. Alright. Um I mean not ideal, but kinda is what it is. Um And now it comes down to what do we discard? I think we just dump one of the Thoughtseizes. And next year we can go Thoughtseize Fable or Thoughtseize Harvester. The second Thoughtseize seems somewhat redundant. Yeah, also a lot of lights, a lot of life loss too. So deal three, play Hive, say go. Hope we don't die because we could easily just die here. 
uh, to the Virtuoso. If, if their hand's full of spells, it's actually like a good chance we die here. Just kind of a beat. I think it was correct, though. Don't really have any play otherwise, so otherwise we're playing Thoughtseize and doing actual nothing, so. Don't kill me, please. Here's an anger. That's a start. Discarding a Reckless Rage. They have a three power double striker. That's seven so far. Can they make their way up to 20? Homestead Courage? That probably does it by itself, right? Can I have counter? Can I have counter? That's plus eight. Discarding a Shijiri Shelter. It's uh, already at 11 here. Wow. All right, we're still alive. That's awesome. They want to leave up a, a protection spell? Sure. Uh, okay. Copter's not awesome here, obviously, because um, it's just tapping all of our blockers, but... Let's just start by casting Thoughtseize and seeing what's up, I think. Honestly. We're not far from casting Ripper, either, so... I actually can't cast Fable yet, which is kind of annoying, but... We can Blood, too. Let's cast Thoughtseize. Interesting spot, because, like, if they have Protection Spell, do they cast it or not? Probably not, right? They have an Escape, a Legionnaire, and a Hoplite. It's a very creature-heavy hand. Escape will give indestructible or hex and hexproof. They have no way to push through a virtuoso yet. Um, I'm gonna take the escape, and then we're going to. I'll just play a harvester and say go. Two blockers up, and a blood. Yeah, I'm just say go. So, they have the one spell, and they get to loot, look for another spell. Copter, not very good in a matchup like this, because, like, it's, he just can't play offense and defense, and, like, we're definitely uh, the control deck here. Here's the Courage, as expected, and they're going to connive. And hopefully not find another good spell. Discard a land. It's a decent sign, I suppose. That's a great sign. Alright, awesome. So, 5-5 five, five Vigilance Double Strike. And a 2-2. Two, two. And they're just going to jam with everything. Wow, that's weird. So, Harvester can just block the Hoplite. I don't think we throw the Copter in front of the Virtuoso. Uh, just because it's so hard to block with it. And I'm looting is great here too, so. I also want to put the copter in front of the Legionnaire and chump block the Virtuoso. We use the loot second copter too. That's actually fine. Let's do that. Let's go. Crew here. And block like this. We need to loot on block for some weird reason. We draw Shieldred. That's interesting. Um, definitely discard Copter here. Alright, so that dies. We go to four and kill a thing, which is great. They play Hoplite. We're gonna blood oil this fable. We're just looking for lands here, too, so. Draw a Vault, okay. And a another Harvester. So we're one mana from Ripper. You get to play Shieldred. We've got enough blockers to stay alive. I think we might be okay here. Barring, like, uh, if, they just, if they just draw a trample effect, we're dead. But aside from that... That's... It's actually fine, right? Because they... <laughs> that's so sick. So they found the anger, but it was off of the, the Kniives. They discarded immediately. So they just, like, done nothing and draw the next turn. They went to ones. Here's Gigantha. And... Here comes the Virtuoso. For sure we're gonna block with Copter here. To literally the Harvester and try and find Lamp or Ripper. Also get to gain some life too. Copter had to just pressure their life, I guess, directly, but sort of shielded, so. Um it's chump block with harvester or chump block with copter? I think it's copter.
get a loot. We find a bitter triumph, which is also pretty sweet, although our life is super low. Man, that's tough. All right, let's discard this harvester. Gain some life. Soak it up. And untap. And draw land. We need to draw land. So now I got the rips. Uh, so now we're just gonna go land, rips. And again, just hope we don't die, I guess. So we just take out. And now they need to find a trample. They have one more shot at a trample spell. Otherwise, I think they're just dead. Two angers down, no monsters rage is seen yet. Oh, what a sicko. All right. Uh, that is 11 power of double strike. Now. We're at eight. Things die and they lose life also. Uh, I'm pretty sure that just killed them. So they connive, now it's even bigger, but now the first strike damage will kill one of these blockers and they'll just die. So, yeah. What a crazy game. Oh man. Um, yeah, so all these die, but I live, and then, boop, get your veins ripped. That's how we do it. All right. Um, yeah, that was a little close for comfort. I'm not going to lie, but we're going to bring in the one rending volley that like only Seth played and none of, none of us did. So we're going to bring in uh, Triumph, Path of Perils, maybe Kalidus, rending volley for sure, maybe Liliana. We're going to cut these copters, which aren't very good. The Zealots are kind of fine, honestly. I think Kalidus isn't very good. I don't know. Uh, Soren, we got a lot of things you could possibly cut here. This is a pretty tough uh, sideboard. I don't recall how Seth sideboarded, honestly. I would say Duress, we probably don't want. Because Thoughts is hitting a creature is pretty good. Shieldred is like... It's funny, it's like not great against them. But, um... I mean, Liliana the draw seems a little rough, too. If they have two creatures in play. Let's get rid of Liliana. And then Kalidus is also interesting. It just make more blockers, which is kind of cool. Maybe we can cut a Fable, maybe. Um, I kind of want the Duress to do that. They're just cheap. You know, like having a cheap spell to not die is pretty cool. Um, I am not Seth. What can I say? Uh, we have five Fatal Pushes, basically. A lot of removal spells, which is great. I think Kalidus is just kind of... Uh, Kalidus and Shield are so weird. Shoulder was obviously very good that game, but honestly, the fables aren't great. Like, what's in the draw? Let's cut a fable. Let's cut two fables, apparently, one duress in. Let's try this. Note that sideboarding was not Seth Manfield approved. I did not play the matchup a single time in the event, nor did we discuss it much. So, I say that's great, though. Uh, we got Thoughtseize into a Zealot, into a Sorin for more removal spells. Extra kill spell here. Also, one Ripper away from, uh, from a Splinter Twin, and uh, feeling pretty good here. But it's Mulligan. Also, we're going to keep this. Pro Tour Finals Rematch. Right here, live on CoolStuffInc.com. By live, I mean pre-recorded. Shock Go. Are they playing Surge of Salvation? That is not in uh, Simon's list, I don't think. Why would they do that? I don't get it. All right, so they have one creature with three spells. It's a pretty easy uh, easy choice here, obviously. One thing he's extra little light on is, is creatures. So, these decks tend to falter against, like, the more the Fatal Push decks and are good otherwise. And the Fatal Push decks are not a great choice for this tournament besides ours, so. Gonna name Vampire, and just gonna Harvester now, honestly. Probably gonna Harvester and just cast Soren and plus it. Truth be told. Getting Soren into play is pretty good. We can sack the Zealot immediately and Helix something. Buy Gigantic. Alright, this might be a somewhat anticlimactic game, but we'll take it. Wonder if I minus would scoop before I went into play or not. You know, just the insta scoop. Alright, attack for four, gain four. Let's take go. Again, now we have Zealot Sack to Soren and a Triumph available too. So I think we're like I don't want to call it just yet, but I think we're mostly locked up here. They cast shut out of a scald, so we'd have a game, I think, but they have you know three augmentation spells. They're gonna anger my creature. Yep, that does draw that does draw a card. Alright, Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Sure. 
Okay, Zealot. Uncounterable, in case you're wondering. Huh. That's pretty good, actually. I'm just gonna put that in. Yeah, so... Doesn't have to be Ripper, you know? So in goes Kalidus. And now I'm just gonna play this on tap, so I have, I have my uh, Triumph up also. Kalidus is a vampire, in case you were wondering. Mana Confluence. Do they have Big Gigantha here? Oh my god. Oh god. Alright, pack it up. Alright, you don't gotta go home, but you can't stay here. And uh, that, is, that is basically it. That's uh, five, six, yeah, it's, that's just ten. Alright, so uh, a little less exciting than the Pro Tour Finals is, but hey, a dub's a dub, right? Alright, on the play. Let's go. We got double mutiful pathway. These pathways are killer. Uh, on the play. And I don't know if we can keep this end. Uh, these pathways are... Uh, they are tough. <sighs> we can play Mutavault on turn one, delay our decision. Um, Fable on turn three is still pretty good. If you try any land, it's, the, it's not a pathway. Um, obviously no turn two Harvester then, though, which is super awkward. Having a ball of four land, three spell, or four land, a four spell, three land hand is pretty, pretty awful. Um, good lord. All right. Um, sorry, I gotta think about this for a second. Oh, man. Um, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep it for me to vault on turn one. Kinda hate it, but we can just draw any dual land, our hand's fine. This can go on red, honestly, and just cast Fable, which is great too, so. Here's a hive. And eh, thought seeds, sure. What they take will determine what we want to uh, get rid of. It's a harvester. Cool. The hardest to cast card in our entire hand. That's a weird choice. Oh, black leaf cliffs, there it is. That's what's up. Attack for two also. Love it. All right, so you go. Now you got turn three Fable. I assume they have second thoughts these, because there's no way you take Harvester there. If you don't have second thoughts, these are Fable, so yeah, Duress, sure. All right. They don't have a land either? What are you doing? What are you doing, friend? All right, we'll just cast Soren and plus it. Plus this way. All right, so you go. We got a weird one here. They have to do one land or double uh, Duress. Hands all spells, obviously, so. Bitter Triumph, discarding a Thought Seize. I suppose that is the downside to playing it. Alright, so I'm, I'm drawing a Duress here is pretty good, because I think they have a good chance they have Sword and, and Ripper, honestly. If they kept this, why would they keep this one lander, you know? So. Nope, they're just like a black deck. They have a Duress, a Push, an Edict, and a Liliana. Uh, sure. Um, Liliana is pretty bad against my creature lands, honestly. I take the push. Weird game here. This is a weird one. It's like mono black mid range. All right, so they're fourteen. We're twenty. Uh, they've got a bunch of these. I'm gonna cast Liliana. Just dies to the Muta Vaults. Gonna duress me, sure, it's fine too. And if we end up in a. Alright, so Preacher's pretty good here. Uh, if I play Preacher, it either, either eats up the old Edict. Yeah, I'll just do this. Play, play Preacher and say, go. Yeah. They want to Edict me? I could, in theory, I could have Evolved and sacrifice it. But. And they just lay on it. So it's fine also, so this is fine. Here's an Edict. Who's Preacher? And now, at the end, if they want to cast Liliana, I've got the Muta Vault, so. Sanitaro. They're, they're playing a Waste Knot. Oh, okay. So, real low resource game here. They got Sanitarium. And now we just kill Liliana, which is kind of a weird choice for them, right? All right, so it is my three Muta Vaults versus their Hive and Gyre Reach Sanitarium. Luck favors the 
Jewish after all. Just interesting. So each player draws and discards. Sure. A lot better as a waste not in play, obviously, but and they're gonna play Citadel. Sure. We draw Fable. Cool. So let's play Fable. And fire at Muta Vaults. Fable's like probably the best card was matchup, so just like so much value for one card. Citadel can activate their sanitarium or hive on the cheap, but like I think that's just fine for us, so. He's mine tome, yes. This is very similar to the deck that I played at the regional championship a few months ago. It was cool, but not as good as I would have liked. Discard a land, draw a fatal push. Alright, so fire up Mutavolt. Fire up Mutavolt. Attack with the clowns, make it a treasure. Yeah. I think we're good here. Um No end step scry. Oh, they drew right on mud. Trespasser is kind of annoying, but fine. We get to, like, gain a life. Uh, we can kill it. We want to discard a card. Probably do, honestly, so. Here's the swamp. We're going to untap and draw a sulfur spring. Sure, so. We're going to, uh, let's see here. This That's the discard. Let's tap for mana. Hold on. I can just fire up all of these, right? With the treasures also. I guess if this card's a fatal push and they can kill my thing before I attack, that'd be annoying, but it seems very unlikely, so make a treasure, make a black. Push this war discard. Alright, so kind of a weird, crazy low resource game. Um it's funny, I almost don't mind being in a draw in a match like this. Um, I just want every card that can make card advantage. It's funny because these zealots are uh, most people on the team played four. They'd be really good here. Um, these fatal pushes are not very good. I want a Liliana and another Triumph, I think. And then I think I want this Kalidus. Honestly, Barge Crusher is pretty good here too. It's a little hard to cast, uh, but they have a lot of utility lands. It's just like a big creature you can't have to go for the throw, which is kind of cool. So don't hate that. And then as far as the duress is, I guess two duress is fine. I'm not like stoked about it, but I think this is uh this is pretty good. Alright, we got pretty good hand. Uh copter, zealot, sword, and a shielder, a lot of high value stuff. We have no turn one discards. Now uh, they have a, a waste knot here, it makes our copter worse, obviously, but like it's fine. I just have a sunken citadel. Alright, so pretty easy copter. Probably should have Mutavolta there, honestly, but it's fine. Okay. Just gonna play Liliana. Right. Um, what do we discard here? We're also gonna attack the Liliana. Probably playing a Zealot. Maybe our Soren's the worst card. I mean, Planeswalkers are very good against them, but they have a they have a hive active next turn also, and honestly, if Liliana has a removal spell, let's give her a sword. I think making land drops is also important in a matchup like this, because you just want to, like, keep hitting them over and over again. Duress is also a great draw. So let's Duress first. Let's see what's up. Cast Duress. They've got Push, Push, Shielded. That's pretty good. All right, let's take a push. Play Mutavolt. Play Zealot. Draw a card. Awesome. And then we're going to Crew. Attack Liliana. Loot. Preacher of Schism is also really good. Man, our hand's juiced. Uh, I think it's the land here, honestly. Well, I kind of want to be able to play two spells next turn. Wow. What do we take? Um, if they just go land shielded next turn, is that bad for us? Let's discard a card of the Liliana, too. Right, let's just discard the land. Let's just start there. Can we just draw more lands with our a copter and just now with our natural draw step? We might discard Shieldred, honestly. We'll see. Here's their Shieldred. So we're going to kill Liliana, which is great. And then do I want to try and get their push? We're going to Liliana and kill their Shieldred. We're going to Zealot Crew attack their Liliana. What do I want to have left over? I think so, the Thoughtseize is just bad here, so just cut the Thoughtseize. 
They discard a waste dot. Okay, so we draw. We draw a land. I don't think we want that. So let's let's lay on it first. Here's a lay on it. Sack creature. Happy to help. <laughs> Crew copter. And get it in. We will draw a duress. So we could duress their fatal push. Leaving them with nothing and us with a a preacher or a shield. We can't keep both. Obviously, we want to play this land. They're both really good. Or we could just dump the duress and just like suck it up. They don't have a way to to to, to revolt anyway. If I just play a big thing into big thing, it's pretty good too. I'm just discard the duress. I think. I mean, a land draw is more important. When both players are on low resources, having enough lands to play to just cast whatever you draw is pretty sweet. So play this and say go. And of course, we can just not fire up Copter in the face of the uh, Fatal Push. Thoughts, these. Sure. So now I'm glad I kept... Uh, yeah, exactly. Now I'm glad I kept both threats. That's pretty awesome. So, sweet. We'll take it. All right. Solid start here. Uh, a couple Thoughts, these. A couple threats. Uh, pretty good mana. We can keep this. Not too shabby. Got the old uh, Scoots. Odawara from our opponent. Let's um, let's see what's up. Spell Pierce or nah? Or nah. So they have Consider, 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 Prankster, Thoughtseize, Shielder. This looks like a uh, a blue-black Phoenix deck. Um, hmm. I mean, I guess it's just Thoughtseize. Honestly, the Considers are obviously irrelevant. They need, they need some lands here, but consider I'll find it. But if they consider into a land, they cast thoughts. It's pretty good. So take away the card that affects the board the most. Kind of interesting as far as sequencing goes for next turn. If I want to play Copter, but I can't play Harvester and Thoughtseize. But they find a swamp. We draw Soren. Hmm. See, so we kind of want to play Copter. Uh, but then if I want to play a creature to crew it, I can't thought seize. So I'm just gonna play a harvester, I think. They're gonna free the Fey, which is fine. Me too. Play Harvester, say go. Next turn, probably Copter Thought Seize. Could be Soren also, but Free the Fey, and they hit a uh, fatal push, which is uh, fine, I suppose. Make our blood. I need to find some more lands here, obviously. They kept a one lander with always considers. Let's take time to cast them. Kind of need to cast Consider now, right? Can't afford to uh, not make a land drop, so. I'm gonna cast Prankster. Must, must have drawn a land, too. Wow, sicko. Alright, well, from one land to three lands. Pretty good draw. Um, we draw a Blood Crypt. Now we can go Copter, Thoughtseize. Yeah, let's just act. We'll Thoughtseize and play Copter. Shoulder next turn would be a little annoying, honestly. Because we don't really have an answer to it at present, but I'll take the three, sure. Fire up Thoughtseize. Probably just take Shoulder here, honestly. Here's Fatal Push, no problem. Yeah, take the, uh, the one actual card. Play land, play Copter, and just say go. So now just two Considers and a land. It's not too much going on here. And uh, start digging, I guess. Yeah, definitely a Phoenix deck. No Phoenixes just yet. We've got Harvester and Mutavolt. Soren can gain some life too. And obviously if we just draw Ripper, that'd be great too. Wouldn't mind that. Cast and a cruise. I don't think this card's gonna be legal in Pioneer this time next year. That's my uh my thought process. Fire with Thoughtseize. Take the Soren. And fire into Arc's Luxury. Sure. So we draw another Harvesters. Harvesters for days. Uh, we're going to cast Harvester, crew, and attack. Um, we could actually just Blood Crypt, activate Mutavault, and then crew and attack, and then play Harvester afterwards. We can see what we draw also. Um, but I don't want to go too low on life, honestly. So we can't play both. Uh, let's do this. Can't play both Harvesters anyway, so let's just crew. And attack and see what we draw. So give me a loot. Fatal push. I don't think fatal push is that good here. Let's just discard that. 
I guess if the blood, it could, it could potentially uh, kill a shoulder or something like that. But we have the Harvester. Harvester now can sack and kill something. We have the another blood coming too. So consider again. Haven't found any Phoenixes yet, thankfully. Hopefully I didn't speak too soon here. I'm going to keep the card. Sure. Oh, let's see. Sure. Down to eight. Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Attack for one. Yeah. Soren Imperious Bloodlord. We're not really thrilled about Soren here because they must have a removal spell. Uh, probably just another push, I would guess. Yeah, we're going to fire a beat of all to crew and attack. Or try to see what happens. That's, that's combat. All right, here they come. We're going to loot. Discard a blood crypt. We see a chump block. This is another free to fay into a bunch of phoenixes. Oh, we're gonna hold sword. They have a hive. All right, just couldn't find a phoenix. Works for us. This is interesting. So, blue black phoenix is uh, not a deck I played against the Pro Tour personally. Obviously, uh, I kind of fell out of favor. Honestly, they are a cruise deck and a phoenix deck. I think we still want the ley lines, even though they have these shielders. The shielders are just kind of similar to Crackwing Drake in a lot of ways. So. We bring in the uh, the four ley lines. Uh, I would say we want the Liliana and the Bitter Triumph because um, post board against with ley line, you want to kill their creatures uh, because those are the most important threats. We want to cut the Cup Doctor against the Fatal Push deck. The Zealots can go also. I think so we want less air in our deck because we have these ley lines now. And then honestly, I think Duress is very good against them. Uh, it's good at hitting crews exactly, but otherwise, like, other threats are creatures post board. Um, yeah, just a couple of duresses. Oh, it looks a little weird, but that's what we determined to be correct at the PT. And I honestly don't hate it cutting a land also uh, when you're on the draw and boarding in ley line because you're kind of bringing a lot of air. Let's leave, let's leave one duress in and let's cut a, uh, a cavern of souls. Um, just because, like, we now we have four ley lines, we're on the draw. You know, our deck's a little more airy, so you don't have to make sure I have more density, and like we don't mind missing a land drop in a ley line game also, so this is fine, uh, I think this is fine by me. Alright, so game two, double rips and a harvester. Not a great hand, honestly. Opponent's mulligan. We do have a blood also, I'm gonna keep this. Any sword's insane. Uh opponent already mulliganed. I don't know, I guess we have a ley lines too. That's the same of a loose keep. I'm trying to talk myself into a bad keep here, I think. I was in a mulligan, yeah. They have thoughts he's for the harvester. Our hand is actual nothing. And we're like, whenever you have four ley line in your deck, you're just like more inclined to mulligan because any hand with ley line is great. So that's a mulligan. Mulligan and find uh, two drop Liliana Ripper. We can keep this. Find a mulligan again. Wow. Um, all right. Keep this. Let's ship the Sulphur Springs. And let's, uh, let's go here. And um, let's give it a spin. See how it goes. Liliana's kind of nice as a removal spell for the shielder and the creatures. Uh, they're not going to have young pyromancers like the Phoenix deck usually does, so it should be more effective. Uh, second Ripper is not so good, but sure, it's fun. Obviously, casting big rips is part of the allure of the card. Is it not, it's not uncastable like a card like Galta and Mavrum would be? I'm going to opt. I'm going to consider. And play a steam bits. All right, third ripper's a little much. Uh, that's why we got bloods. You know, this is why we played the the Rakdos version of a deck because the mono black version didn't have the filtering this deck does. With four bloods and four fables. Uh, these sort of awkward draws get thinned out pretty quickly. So they're gonna free the Fey. They find a phoenix, and they're gonna take a push here. Maybe obviously drawing sword would be the uh, the nuts here. We have the other three mana plans walker right now. No removal spell, though. There's a mutabolt. Um, yeah, pretty happy just, like, firing up Liliana here, I think. They discard a Phoenix. It looks pretty bad, obviously. Uh, but I think in the post-board games, it's still worth bringing in. Yeah, so obviously that's kind of kind of unfortunate, but is it it is. Don't think it's correct to bring it against the blue-red version of Phoenix, but I think against the blue-black version when they have Shieldreds and they have more threatening creatures, it's a little better, but... Again, looks a lot better in a ley line game. We do a four ley lines. 
looks like we're going to get Phoenix here in, into Oblivion, so. They got a cruise, too. Something. And Bitter Triumph. Alright, so. Not so not so good here. Uh, both, both Phoenix has come back, and now our Liliana is dead, too. I mean, they're not much left. If we just draw land, land, and cast Ripper, I think that'd be good. I mean, let me draw, like, Fable into, like, some stuff. We draw a Thought Seize. They do have a. They're pretty low. They have their last card here. It's a Shredder, which is not really great for us, but. Fire up an attack. So they're going to be at 8 life with 2 burbs and a prankster, and we're 18. We trust Swamp Swamp to win. Like, probably. Alright, yeah, they're out. They got nothing left. So, 3 turn clock. We draw a Black Cleave Cliffs. They attack for 7. Yeah, it's just what it is, I guess. Fire Bolt Mutavolts. Attack for 2. So they block one, go to six, and then they attack for seven. We go to five, we cast the Ripper, and uh, hope it's good enough, honestly. Well, uh, not too good there, obviously. They drew a cruise. <laughs> all right, all right, you got me. Right, that's fine. All right, no cards in Andrew Treasure Cruise. That works, I guess. Yeah, cruise is, uh, I think cruise might be a little too good. All right, so they're, uh, we draw a push, they're dead. We draw a Fable. Uh, I believe that's uh, not going to do it. We draw a Cliffs. All right, so they got us. That's fine. We'll go to game three. No big deal. Just going to bring the land in back on the play and cut the Liliana. On the play. We got Sword and Ripper, Shielded, Push, and three lands. No red, importantly, because we have the Pathway and the Cavern of Souls. I mean, we're going to keep this. If we have a Thought Seize, it's kind of awkward, but... Question is, what do we put out as our first land? Pathway on black. I guess we have Shieldred also. They don't have any one drops, but then if I draw a Harvester, if I play Mutable first, I can't cast it. There are Thought Seize, like, I don't play Mutable first. We're going to delay the decision on our Pathway, and then maybe get it for two if they cast Thought Seize. All right, there's Thoughtseize. So they have broken up the combo, but our hand's still pretty good, obviously. Take the sword, and we draw a... <sighs> we draw a Harvester. All right. Here's the Vampire. Only card in the whole deck that punishes us for this. I think it's correct otherwise, uh, but it is what it is. What are you going to do? Let's draw another sword to make up for it. That'd be cool. So they're uh, already 14. Our man is a little wonky. Uh, Pathway is probably the worst line of the deck, honestly. It's still necessary, but and now we draw Fable. So now we have the awkward spot of no black or no red. Um, about as awkward as it gets. And of course, they had the Thought Seizer or Sorin. Do I cast Fable here? Do I just push this Treader to get in? I think with shoulder in our hand, we're just gonna play push and kill and get him for two. Um, obviously, Sox not to cast Fable, but Treaders are one of the best cards in their deck, and uh, an active Treader will discard Phoenixes and so on and so forth. So let's not let them get their uh, get their game on here. We draw any black source, cast Shouldered. Any red source, cast Fable. We draw Thoughtseize. It's kind of awkward, but let's just cast this. I think possibly get him for two. They have free the Fey here. We can take a cruise maybe. And here's Free the Fae. And there's a Cruise. All right. Take the Cruise. They have Double Cruise. Obviously, they have Double Cruise. Man, we are... Uh, they are hitting all their spots here, for sure. They have Stormwing Entity. I forgot that card existed. They also have Go Blank, which is, like, kind of irrelevant, I think. Um, and they can Cruise and cast... They can't Cruise yet. They only have five cards. This is a six card in the graveyard. I think I gotta take the Stormwing Entity, honestly. Second cruise is kind of redundant. Go Blank's annoying, but yeah, let's take the Stormwing Attack for two. This has been a uh, kind of a tough match. Uh, especially with this game in particular, literally everything has gone wrong, but that's okay. Just gotta keep playing through. So they got six in the bin. They play Opt and have a one mana cruise. 
And we draw... I mean, a land for shoulder, it's not bad. I think land... I think just, like, Blood Crypt is the best possible draw. Just, like, turn on our hand. Fire up the cruise. This card is, uh... It's kind of not okay. They're gonna duress me. They're at 8. I mean, they're at 10. Let me draw a sword. Hell yeah. Alright, sword. Do your thing, bud. We're going minus. And we're going for the rips. Say go. So, no creatures in play or in the, or, no Orphanx in the graveyard. And they are at 10. And they are dead on board thanks to Sora and River. The big rips. So, all those uh, terrible things that happened earlier in the game. Karma's come together here to make it uh, a little better for us. They have Prankster. They have a kill spell also. We're going to find out. Let's see what they do, obviously. So, probably have a, uh, a what's it called here? A, um, a Bitter Triumph, but we're going to fire up the Muta Vaults. Put a counter on the Muta Vaults. They have to sack this. They take four damage overall from the Ripper and the, prank the Prankster dying. Attack with these. They're probably going to block... I guess they'll probably block Muta Vaults too, I guess. So, block Muta Vaults. And they're going to Bitter Triumph here, discarding a card. Take four total. We go to 22, they go to six. And I have to play Harvester. Discarding a Phoenix, lucky. All right. So drain. This dies, drain again. And push two? Wow, what an animal. That was... Really, really lucky. All right, sure. All right. I mean, here's Harvester Sigio. They've got five cards because of the Phoenix for a cruise. Slide hands are a really good draw. Uh, just want to chain spells together, cast cruise, and then get back a Phoenix and kill my Soren. Okay. That's enough for cruise. Yes, it is, man. All right. Yeah, that's pretty good. So they get to Phoenix now, kill Soren. I attack back with them to three. We draw a Fatal Push. Not a particularly good draw. All right. All right, so there you go. Concerned with our ability to close this game out. Mm, well, what can I do? Right? I can just uh, try and win the game. They have three cards in hand, but they didn't attack, so. Draw off blood. It's a fable. Fatal push the chicken. Negate. Okay, no attacks. We draw a fatal push. Alright, let's cast our fate. Did they have another negate? They have this thing to block through the hall, so. Alright, let's take out. No attacks. Leaving up seven for hall return is. A lot. So, your shield root. Okay. That's actually kind of fine for us. So, we're just going to discard this, take another hit. It's fine. Discard this. Sure. You have to attack, make a treasure, and kill shield root, which is good. So, if they ever had to get into the negate here, that would be pretty devastating, but. Okay. So we're going to go to 1. Yeah. 17 to 1. They have a big blocker, two cards, and I have a Fable about to flip also. This is a cruise. For 5 mana. A little more fair, I suppose. 
Um. I feel like I draw a ley line next turn. I got a bad feeling. Alright, so they draw three. Again, Treasure Cruise is pretty messed up. They draw Shieldbird. They draw Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Unfortunately, is uh, it's pretty good, but... Now all their cantrips gain life, too. Shoulder is pretty busted in this deck. They have so much card draw, so they're going to go three. And they might get out of range here. All right, one, two, three, four, five. So the hall is not active. We draw Soren. We draw Soren. We have no vampires currently, though, so we can't sack and just kill them. Um, we fire up the hive. They have a removal spell. It's absolutely devastating. We just play Soren plus it. Let's end step copy the, sh the shaman. Give us the efficient life link, they just block the Phoenix, so we're not gonna do that. So I'll just say go. Tough game. A lot of cruising. Well, it's three cruisers that have cast so far this game, right? It's pretty gross. They had to push anyway if I'm with the hive. Jeez, that's ridiculous. Alright, this is on this is on the end step. We're gonna copy this because uh can't copy anything else, at least we have a chump blocker. This should have done this our second main phase, so this would go away. Wow. They are turning it on. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 10, 13, 14. I mean, they have a kill spell where it's dead, so... All right, what are you gonna do? That's a tough match, folks. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, so pretty good draw from our opponent, and uh, yeah, that's just it, I guess. All right, so there you go. Uh, Treasure Crew is still really good. I think that um, the Pioneer. I'll do an article on this in the future, but I think Treasure Cruise has hit the point now where it might be time to ban it, as you saw in that last match there. Uh, but deck's great. Deck is, I think this deck mild, will, will likely supplant Rakdos midrange in that sort of like Rakdos midrange uh, kind of like space in the format, where Rakdos midrange did really, really badly at the Pro Tour and just lines up pretty poorly against a lot of top decks in the format. This deck just kind of does a lot of the same things, but has this really high top end too of like sometimes you just put Ripper in play on turn three off of Soren. And I'm excited to see where this deck will turn out. It was a totally unknown quantity of the Pro Tour. We were the only ones playing it. We just built it, tested it, and played it. And uh, just really, really cool. Very excited. So, of course, love my team. Uh, big congrats to Seth. And uh, proud of the work we did on this one. Really, really cool. So... That's it for me this week. Um, not every week your team wins a pro tour, but I'll try to make next week as exciting as I possibly can. All right, folks. Love you all. Thanks for watching. I'm Jim Davis, CoolStuffInc.com. Promo code JIM5, 5% off your order. I'll see you next week.